If I can just say a little bit more about some of our projects and priorities. Prevention, as I mentioned before, is a very important priority because we recognize that there are many people that are at risk of, of experiencing homelessness. One of the things that I think is important for us to talk about is the visibility of homelessness. and. We see many people sleeping rough, sleeping in unprotected doorways. But it's also important for us to not lose sight of the fact that there are many people who are invisibly homeless, who are sleeping on couches, sleeping in cars, sleeping in parks, or in abandoned houses or buildings. We don't actually see those people, so we don't actually know the, the, the extent of the problem. We also have many people who are living in overcrowded accommodations, who may be living in unsafe uh, buildings. And so for us, it's important to find a way to create housing for these individuals as well. Streets to Homes is another exciting project that we, have, we are championing. And we're working on that project with a number of partners, Kool-Aid Society, Pacifica Housing, Our Place, um, BC Housing, the Salvation Army, the Native Victoria Native Friendship Center, VHA, the Vancouver Island Health Authority. And together, we want to move approximately 120 people who are homeless, currently homeless, and who've been homeless for at least a year, and who have some type of addiction or mental health problems, we want to move them into private market housing. And so we are working vigorously to try and secure the private market units. BC Housing has kindly provided some rental supplements to help to facilitate this, and in order for this this project to be successful, we need the community. We need the community to support the project, but more importantly, we need landlords and property managers to say, okay, sure, I will rent a unit or a few units to these individuals because we care. Um, the program has a number of incentives that will support landlords and so we look forward to this program being a success. It's, it's built on a housing first model, which essentially means that every individual can move into uh, housing, can move into accommodations, and in fact that that will help to stabilize people. And so regardless of issues that individuals are facing, so whether it's addiction or a mental health problem, whether they're actively using or not, whether they have pets or not, that they deserve and they can move into a housing unit. While I'm talking about streets to homes, there's the other side, recognizing that if someone has lived um, without housing, who has been sleeping rough, for a significant period of time, it, it's, it's challenging. We've heard how challenging it is for people to transition to housing, and particularly housing that's not supported 24 hours a day. And so we need to continue working on that, working on supporting people and supporting the idea of creating healthy communities. As long as we have people in our community that cannot afford food, that cannot afford safe, adequate housing, it means that we do not have a healthy, stable community. And so it is, it is every person's responsibility, I think, to challenge themselves, to challenge ourselves, to be part of the solution in any way that we can. There's a... Uh an amazing artist locally uh, who's from uh, Ontario territory I believe Ghana's Tagi but I'll, I'll, I'll check that but she's finishing a master's degree mm -hmm. in art and she does amazing art like really large 
pieces and she has Andy Warhol meets amazing First Nations powerful traditional woman mm -hmm. and one of her pieces is going to be the cover of our, our documentary yay it, yeah yeah and it's called I don't want to play house yeah. and it's a picture of a 50 something year old woman with crutches First Nations with a buggy mm -hmm. she has a shopping cart and she doesn't want a home her home is outside she feels safer there um, other women too speak of you know not feeling safe in a home because mm -hmm. of having violent past and someone came up with an idea that you know and I guess the Supreme Court is kind of supporting that but for people to be supported by community like those women those people are out there like you talked about them earlier they're more spread out they're they're more vulnerable mm -hmm. and the advocacy watch part of thaw transform homelessness advocacy watch is really asking the community to watch out for those people you know instead of seeing them and being scared see them and be scared for them mm -hmm. because there's people who don't want to be a part of civilization. They're saying they don't want an apartment, they don't want a home, they don't want the mask, they don't want the travel lodge. They want to, you know, collect cans and stay away from anything illegal. Just leave me alone, please, right. you know? Right. And then we find that the community on the street are very tight. There's a lot of people who are like family. And, and you know, so I, we're also asking, I guess, because the, the street is asking for support on that. And, you know, Kayvon Shojania, the, the lawyer, talked about an idea that, and I think it's a great idea. I can see how it has potential for problems, but someone suggested that the Committee to End Homeless could be a, a base for people to sign up, that they get a free license from the city and to have a spot and that they could, because you know, some of them are saying, we don't want to be a part of any city, blah, blah, but we'll go to the Committee to End Homelessness and we'll sign up there, but that's it. And there are some people who don't, like literally, they don't want to be a part of anything, but you know, you have to be a part of it somehow. And this fellow was saying the lawyer, like they can sign up, they get a spot, they take care of that spot, they clean it up every day, they get to keep it. Mm -hmm. they, they abuse it, they leave it a mess, violent, whatever, they lose their, you know, well, you know, the criminal element will come in if you're violent, but if you're not taking care of it, you lose that privilege. Right. And I just think it's a really, you know, a good idea. It's like diversity, diversified solutions. Right. It's um, very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Uh, though, I would want to know and would certainly want to work with people who prefer to live outdoors. I would want to understand why. And mm -hmm. because I wonder if we spent enough time talking to people and listening to their stories, listening to their lived experiences. We're going to hear them on here. Okay, so that's amazing <laughs> because I, I think we need to do a better job, particularly the people that are in positions of power, people like me who are housed. We need to do a better job of hearing, truly hearing people and truly understand truly understanding how people have come to the decisions that they've come to and and support them as much as we can wouldn't it be amazing if every single housed person in this community could adopt someone who's either unhoused or who's at risk of losing their housing mm -hmm. you know i was born and raised in jamaica and it was a rural part of jamaica and i grew up in a time where my grandparents, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, we all lived in the same house and we took care of each other. And my grandparents took care of other members of the community, people who may not have had the same uh, access to resources that we had. We took care of each other. We were responsible for each other and we held each other accountable. Wouldn't it be an amazing thing if in our community, right here in on Vancouver Island, if we can, if we each person who's in the position to adopt another person, if we could do that and look out for that person, wouldn't that be an amazing way to build community? Because that's essentially what we're talking about. I mean, homelessness is, is, is a narrow part of a broader social problem. What we need to do is a better job of taking care of our community, increasing and improving the quality of life that every single person uh, has. And so, that's a challenge that I'm putting out there. You know, what can you do to contribute to the solution? That is my question. And if you don't do anything now, if not now, then when? At what point do you get in the game and do you say, okay, yeah. let me roll up my sleeves and instead of being critical, instead of being pessimistic and negative, and instead of blaming people who are not in a position or may need support yeah. to take care of themselves, instead of blaming them, help them. 
Provide some support. Offer them a job. Offer them an opportunity to volunteer. Offer them an opportunity to tell their story. And that's the thing about listening is that, you know, our, our hearts open when that happens. Yeah. You know, I think that's a wrap. Like that, that seriously, that's a good, good one to end it on. I can let it go Thank for a you. second. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>